Hi there, friends. I'm Vasco. I'm part of the team behind the first global Scrum Master Summit. If you're a Scrum Master, the Scrum Master Summit is a place to learn, to share, and to meet new friends. We will have lots of live sessions where you can meet and network with other Scrum Masters from all over the globe. So make sure you check it at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit and the numeral 21. That's bit.ly forward slash SMSUMMIT21. We have seven amazing keynotes or more as we are still organizing the conference as I record this and eight tracks that feature people like you and thought leaders sharing their insights and knowledge to help you become an awesome Scrum Master. So once again, check it out at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 21. That's all lowercase, all one word, SM Summit and the numeral 21. I'll see you on the virtual conference floor. All right, now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday success Thursday here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And this week we have with us Omar McNeil. Hi, Omar. Welcome back. Yes, glad to be back. Good morning. So, Omar, on Thursdays we talk success, and uh, one of the tools we most use to try to reach that successful outcome is, of course, the retrospective. So share with us, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? So for retrospectives, I have to say I've experimented with many, many, many different types, different formats, different flavors, and I prefer non-traditional formats. Uh, because it brings more out of a team and it's about having fun. So if you use the same format over and over and over again, there's not there's only so much value and the team is kind of like, okay, well, yeah, here's what worked, here's what didn't work, and then blah, blah, blah. So it's important to change things up and have different types of retrospective. So for example, uh, you can use the health check. I think it's not Spotify. It's maybe at last end of the, but they have the health check where you use the cards, like, you know, how's everybody feeling? And you kind of go through the health check of different scenarios. I recently ran the Oscar, the Academy Awards Oscar retro, which is a lot of fun. Uh, this retro is where you use categories, Oscar style. So you would pick like the most, uh, the best, story for the sprint or who was the best actor the best teammate to step up and help somebody else out or who was the quiet hero in the back it's kind of the same category but you can change different categories and you can have people vote on them so if you were to have a, a whiteboard you can have like you know people put you know dot voting and then you can do the whole ceremony and the oscar goes to this story or this person for doing this and you can kind of have fun um uh I played like the Academy Awards music in the background. There's a couple of them on YouTube. <laughs> That's so you... a nice tip. Oh yeah. So you have it all in the background and, you... and it's just about having fun and getting more information uh, from the team. Another one is the, the force awakens retro. I had a counterpart. Uh, she introduced me to this where basically it's, you know, the light side and the dark side of the, re of the retrospective. So if you're going through uh like the sprint or, or any iteration and they're like, okay, what are the good things and the bad things? Like, you know, what are the things that, you know, give us the, the, the power of the force? What are the bad things that, you know, if, if this continues to move forward would bring us to the dark side. So it's like, you know, you can have like Luke Skywalker on one side, Darth Vader on the other, and just, you can just have complete fun with it, a lightsaber in the middle. Uh, number one of my favorites are the four L's or three L's, the liked, lacked, longed for, and learned. So sometimes I dropped, one of the L's will do liked, lacked, and learned. And then that way we can say, what did we learn this sprint? What was lacking? What can we do to improve? And what did you like? What is something that we did as a team that we liked? Uh, there's also like, uh, if you were in person, pre-COVID world, you can do a lot of fun stuff. Like you can have music in the background. I, I think I saw, what, I haven't tried this one yet, where uh, as people go up and put their stuff on the board, you play theme music for them and they have fun. Uh, I also use the Fast and Furious retrospective. So it's like, what's something that happened fast? Like, what made you furious to sprint? What is something that was fantastic? You know, just different. That, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. And if you're using whiteboarding tools, if you're using Miro or Miro or any of the other ones, it's so much easier to facilitate remotely. And it's a lot of fun. And you can just go crazy with it. Uh, so the big thing is having fun and learning and growing. 
But the also important thing are the action items. Like you can have all these retro fun fun things, but what are the action items that you're capturing from this retro? Like what are we what are we finding out? Like how can we improve? What are the things? And then filtering those in and assigning them to a person uh, to take into the next sprint and then checking on that. Like, hey, here's an action item for um, our retrospective. How did we do? Like we made a small change. Was it impactful? Did it work? Do we need to change anything? So it's also having a conversation with the team of, okay, here's our action item. Let's run through it this next sprint and then coming back and say, hey, did this work? What do you guys think? How do you feel? And then going from there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have some tips on how to capture and prioritize action items? Because that's one of the things I see Scrum Masters fail at quite often. Sometimes not capturing, sometimes capturing, capturing too many and not really having progress in any. So one of the tips I do is if I see one, I'll say, hey, I, I, you know, I pause and say, team, I just want to make sure I have this right. It sounds like the action item we have here is this. Is this correct? And then that way they can say yes or no, it needs to be this. And then we can move it into our action item column. Uh, for prioritizing, that is a, actually a great point of what is the highest priority for us to get done. Typically, it kind of, well, I've seen it happen organically where we'll move things around like, you know, we'll say, okay, which was the first thing we need to tackle <laughs> uh, this next sprint or next iteration? Uh, so we'll kind of move that towards the top and then we can pull that into our, our backlog and then it also gets prioritized there. Yeah, that's a, a good set of tips. Uh, just uh, all of you out there, be careful not to take too many action items and to be explicit about what they are. Um Omar, that was a, a, a great set of ideas. I, in fact, quite a few ideas for us to try. Uh, now we turn our attention to success and what success means for us as Scrum Masters. So uh, share with us, what's your understanding and your own definition for successful outcome of the Scrum Master's job? Yes, I see it as two things, uh, success in delivery and success in the team. So for delivery, you know, outcome driven development do we achieve our goal you know are we again i kind of go back to my federal experience where uh they were more focused on how many story points or velocity and, and things of that nature like you know did you uh did you complete 30 points this this sprint well honestly a team could kind of game the system and say that three is really a five hey we we met our point goal but what is the outcome that we do we deliver our outcome you know, outcomes over outputs, you know, do we achieve our goal? Do we provide business value or do we just build throwaway work? You know, do we build a feature that nobody's going to use uh, that it was just demanded to us? You know, how are we provide? Did we provide business value? Do we achieve our goal? And the focus there in del uh, is delivery is, you know, outcome driven development over outputs for the team. Are we working together? How are we working together? You know, is there conflict? How we remove that? You know, changing how we treat each other. You know, I have, uh, there was one team I took over. I, there was literally during a stand up, a fist fight almost broke out because they were. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. There is a, there was some. A virtual there. fist fight, right? Especially oh, no. this year. This was uh, pre COVID. Uh, this is pre COVID. Oh, my so. God. Then it's not safe. Yep. Yep. There is a, a lot of, I, I stepped in and there was a lot of conflict, a lot of, you know, a lot of issues going there. So one of the first things I did with that example is we created a social contract so we can hold each other accountable. Uh, and also like we define how we would treat each other with that. You know, once you have your social contract, you put it high on, on the wall in your physical space or virtual space. So that way it's always there. People can refer to it. If somebody has an issue, we can say, Hey, stop. Are we, do we need to revisit our social contract? Are we holding ourselves accountable to the, uh, things that we agreed to. And that kind of helped call the situation. Also with that is you, as a scrum master, if you notice there's conflict between team members, you have to get in and figure out why uh, there's conflict and try to resolve the issue. Sometimes there's a case where it's just, you can't solve it and you may have to move people around. I've actually, that was what happened in my case, uh, but you have to get in there and try to, you know, resolve the issue, try to solve the problem, find out exactly why the conflict is and try to figure it out because again as a scrum master not only are you you know focused on delivery and building and leading the team you're also you know coaching uh people on your team and it's a lot of personal uh personal things as well as just interactions because uh people come from different backgrounds different upbringings or just different 
thought processes. So, you know, the focus there is getting everyone to uh, get together and work together and just find the right way to get it done. Uh, another thing on that is, is, is talking to people. Pre-COVID, I stress, get off your butt and go talk to people. Uh, that's probably the best way to communicate versus, you know, IM or email, because sometimes you don't get the intent uh, the person's intent from their email or or their instant message, like their email may come uh, come to you as like, oh, this person is a little upset, they're cold, but that's just how they type an email. Get off your butt and go talk to people. If you're in the same building, you can do that. In a COVID world, it's a little different. I prefer getting on a quick call versus chat and email because uh, that way you can communicate quicker and you have better understanding and you can read body language. Mm-hmm. And that also means turn on your camera. Turn I on your just- camera. Yes, yes, definitely. I can't stress that enough. It, it, it's hard. I was uh, facilitating a discovery session with uh, some clients, and on the client side, nobody turned on their camera. So it's hard to read. One, you're virtual, so it's hard to read the room, but it's even harder if you can't see them. And it's you know hard to communicate if you don't have your camera on. So again, turn on your camera. Uh, if you're able to have a quick call versus, I prefer a quick call versus a chat and email. Uh, so for example, I was trying to schedule uh, uh, a meeting uh, a meeting with some folks from different divisions. I shot out a quick email like, hey, I'm shooting this out. Let's get together and we'll have a conversation in person versus, you know, going back and forth in email. So that way you get all the right people in the room. You're able to get to a decision and you're able to all get aligned and agree on things versus the email and chat back and forth. So turn on. So uh, success uh, for Scrum Master delivery outcomes over outputs, uh, providing business value. And as a team, are we working together? Are we communicating together? And let's make sure we're treating each other correctly. Absolutely. Those are definitely great guidelines for us. Thank you very much for sharing that, Omar. Yes, you are most welcome. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.